So now that we have looked at how to calculate the asymptotical approach, there is a question that we can actually tackle here. So I'd like you to give this one a try, uh, where we're going to use the asymptotical approach, and we're going to try and solve uh, this question here. So let's put that somewhere here. Let's see. So using the same method, we need to now solve this question that we have here. So here you will see that the G of S is given to us. It is K divided by S plus 2 into S plus 4 into S plus 6. There are no zeros. There are three poles. So you can try and fit these equations that we did here and we can try and see if you can generate the same pole. So this is a uh, uh, self-test that you can do to learn some, gain some understanding of this topic. Right. So, like we mentioned, we are going to now go on to methods of refining the sketch. So, we said the asymptote is not an exact location, but an approximation. That's where the word um, asymptote comes in. Right. Now, when we are refining the sketch, the first point that we need to look at is how do we now calculate the exact breakaway and break in points when it comes to a control system. So the real axis breakaway and break in points. So I'm going to use this example to show you this break in and breakaway point. So if you have a look here, you'll see that in this diagram that we have, there are two points where the root locus breaks away and breaks in. Now, why do we call this as the break away point and why do we call this as the break in point? That's because if you go back to the properties that we learned about the root locus, we said that the root locus always starts at a open loop or finite pole and ends up at a open loop of finite zero. So it is this rule that helps us to note where they start and where they end. Okay. So this point here is called the break away point. Let me just bring that here. This is the uh, break away point. And this here is the break in point, right? And there you can see the arrow. The arrow is heading in this direction, which means that the system is breaking away and going away and coming back in. So the breakaway always happens at a zero, or sorry, at a pole, and the break in always happens at a zero. Now, it's not necessary that all root locuses will have a break in but every root locus will have a breakaway. Some root locuses will stop somewhere here. But in any case, that will be at a zero. But it's not necessary that it will break and come back into the real axis. So please be on guard for such a situation. So what we're going to do now is going to see how are we going to calculate that exact location. Remember, we are refining the sketch. Now, in this section, we need to do a bit of uh, differentiation uh, to solve this problem. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a problem and we're going to try and see if we can solve it, right? And it is as it states there using differential calculus. Find the breakaway and break-in points for a root locus of figure 8.13 using the differential calculus. So let's look at 8.13. Where is that figure? 8.13 is this uh, figure 8.13a, I'm assuming. Let's have a look. They want us to use this exact same problem that we started off with here. Is it not this one? No. Let's have a look. Breakaway and breaking point. 
point for the root locus of figure 8.13. Alright, so 8.13 is this question here, figure 8.13. Yep, this is the question that we have. Right? So what we're going to try and see is we're going to try and see if we can uh, renew that sketch that we have here. So they have given us points where the system meets. So the question is, using the open loop poles and zeros, we find the location of the poles. So over here, let's have a look. Using the open loop poles and zeros, we represent the open loop system whose root locus is shown in figure 8.13. So why did they get the S minus 3, S minus 5, S plus 1 and S plus 2? So that's a very good question and it's a, way, it's a different way in which the question can be asked. So in another way that you can be given the question is through this figure that we have here. So if you have a look at this figure, you can see that where are the poles and where are the zeros. So you can see that the poles are at minus 1 and minus 2. So the poles are at minus 1 and minus 2 and then the 0 is at my, uh, plus 3 and plus 5. So it is from this equation that they created the open loop transfer function. So this is a tricky way in which the question can be asked where they do give you the location of the poles on a root locus and then you need to figure it back out. Now, why do they say that kgs into h of s is equal to this one? So they're saying that the open loop multiplied by the feedback is equal to this figure. And it is a open loop system. So the equation will be simplified. They have actually multiplied it in and they've got this point. So it is k into s squared minus 8s plus 15 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 2, right? So this is the, the figure that we have. Now, the equation that they have for solving this kind of a problem is also given in this section. So you can see that it is k is equal to minus of 1 into g of s divided by h of s, right? So k is equal to minus 1 divided by g of s into h of s. So if you take this denominator to the left hand side, you will see that k into g of s into h of s should be equal to minus 1. So this is the first point where we are going to start when we are solving this problem. And as you can see here, but all for, for all points along the root locus, the general equation is that k into g of s into h of s is equal to minus 1. So this is the first point. So whichever question that you get, you can write it into this format. So in our case, this becomes k uh, into s squared minus 8s plus 15 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 2 is equal to minus 1. Now, if you cross multiply, you will see that you get this as minus of s squared plus 3s plus 2 divided by s squared minus 8s plus 15. And that is equal to k. k is equal to minus of s squared plus 3s plus 2 divided by s squared minus 8s plus 15. So this is the, the first step that we need to do. The next step that we need to do is to use differential calculus. So using differential calculus, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate k with respect to s. So we're going to say dk by ds. Now bear in mind in some uh, cases you will see that we substitute s with sigma and Wherever we have a s, we write it as sigma. You can choose to write in this method or you can still keep it as s. It's still fine. You can uh, do either, right? So 
I'm going to keep it as S and you will see that it's dk by ds so this is of your general formula from maths 3 this is of d by ds of x by y and that we know is x into y dash minus y into x dash the whole divided by y square so this is the the formula that you have here. Now based on this formula you need to do the differentiation and once you do the differentiation you will see that you will end up with this answer. Sorry. You will end up with this answer. So dk by ds is equal to zero, right? So we need to equate it to zero. So on differentiation, you'll see that you'll get 11 S squared or Zygma squared minus 26 Sigma minus 61 divided by Sigma squared that or S squared minus eight S plus 15, the whole square is equal to zero. So when you equate this to zero, you get the equation as 11 S squared minus 26 S minus 61 is equal to 0. Right? So this is the equation that you get. So getting to this point from here to here, that is getting this differential equation is the key part of this uh, uh, study. So you need to do be very conversant with your differentiation techniques and you need to make sure that you are able to do the differentiation. So I'd like to urge everyone to try and do this differentiation and see if you do get the, the right answer. In any case, from this point, what you do is that you find the roots of the quadratic equation. So this is the, the, the quadratic equation that we have. So find the roots of this quadratic equation. So you can use minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a or you can use your calculator or even you can use MATLAB. Either way, when you use that, you will see that there are two points that we get. The first one is sigma equals minus 1.45 and the second one is sigma equals 3.82. So, let's have a look here. So the first point is sigma equals minus 1.45 and the second one is equal to 3.82. Now here, the negative value almost always will be your break away point. This is your break away point. And the positive point will be your break in point. That is as shown in this diagram. So it will be at minus 1.45 and plus 3.82. So this is how you do this calculation for refining the sketch and this is on how to find the breakaway and the break in point. So further on you'll see that there are other methods you can use as well. I prefer the, the differentiation method because there is less calculation. There's another method where you can do a bit of cross multiplication this gives you the same answers but it's slightly more complicated but you can also try it out you all, all you need to do is to multiply the factors together here so if you're not very good with differentiation you can try this method but i will warn you that it is slightly longer and it uh, there is a lot of s terms that come in so it might make it a bit more confusing right so i want you to give this one a shot and try and see if you can indeed uh, figure that one out Okay.